Hi, my name is uh, Stefan Broe and I will be discussing the problematic of uh, chasing cracks and more precisely deciding whether or not to leave a crack as it is and then try to seal off the tooth or not or do something else. The step by step in this procedure is actually uh, using a lot of uh, visual uh, information. So the first step is using high, mag high magnification to make sure you can see as many details as possible. So you can judge the uh, size or the width and the depth of the crack line that you're trying to uh, evaluate. Then second is use uh, fluorescent light so that you can have a color response in the information that you get. It helps you to decide whether or not uh, the substrate you're trying to bond to will be um, of good quality. Then the third step is using detecting dye, but not carious detecting dye, not methylene blue, but a biofilm indicator that helps you to judge whether or not there is biofilm in the crack line, if there is any left. And then uh, using those three uh, techniques, you can mix them actually uh, in your total approach, but you need at least to create a clear pathway to a crack line that you might accept to leave there and then you know seal the whole thing off. You will use a mix probably of small tiny burrs and air abrasion to open up a crack line that you're trying to chase. The ultimate goal is to create a final seal uh, and prevent bacteria to get in uh, and create some havoc or uh, <laughs> trouble. The materials that I use uh, in this procedure are high magnification and I use a microscope for this together with the shadowless light it's allowing me to have the, as much detail as possible. Second, the D-Light Pro light during unit with also the detection mode so the fluorescent light will help me to interpret uh, color response and uh, check integrity of the substrate we're bonding to and then the last one a specific material is the plaque uh, indicator, uh, the tree plaque, um, that will help me to evaluate presence of biofilm in the crack line that I am evaluating and or not chasing in that context. In the treatment of the tooth that has the cracks uh, or that had the history of a crack that was completely chased and sealable, I will always go uh, for a base material like Everix Flow uh, possibly in a dentine shade or even a bulk shake, it doesn't matter actually to me. The thing is to have a reinforced dentine core as a replacement for the base and then on top you can work with a direct material like composite or you can work indirect with lithium desilicate. Uh, but uh, material wise to me key is the dentine reinforcement of the fibers in the Everix flow. In evaluating those crack lines, whether or not to chase them, I avoid using um, dyes that will have um, negative or false positive results. So like methylene blue, I will not use it in that context because it will even color a craze line in the enamel, so that's not the, the, the context where you want to use it. I'm not going to use uh, uh, carious detecting dye because it's not really designed and it could also, well it's too expensive <laughs> uh, in that context and um, it's not the focus of that material or of that dye is not going to be very helpful. It can create also a very good p correct positive effect but it gives less color response on the dentine and the enamel, especially in combination with fluorescent light. The mix of tree plaque with the D-Light Pro gives you the best color response in, uh, in, in checking the integrity of the substrate you're trying to seal and to clean off. So that's in terms of the don'ts. What I always do is use common sense. Like know where the limit is, know where is biological width. I'm not going to violate biological width. I know the limit of my isolation, so I know up to what point I can go and chase them. And then you just have to accept up to what level you can finally go.